hey, I'm back doing more comparison tests in performance between the new M1 MacBook Air and my old MacBook Pro 2019 with 64 gigs of RAM i9 processor MacBook Pro. And today we're living up to my shirt right here. We're doing a native script build test and a run on the simulator. Now I'm only doing iOS simulator right now. Android is gonna gun down the line sometime because iOS is super simple to set up on a Mac. Android is a bit more complicated. Now, I gotta say that I was completely blown away by this test I'm about to show you. So let's jump in. All right. So I already have the native script CLI installed and to my surprise, it actually worked fine. The native script CLI installed just fine. It is a globally installed NPM package after all, but it also worked fine with Xcode. So um, the whole build process worked the first time I ran it, which was also a little bit surprising to me. That's great. So let's continue. I'm going to use the CLI to create a brand new app, a very simple application. And then I'm gonna kick things off and run it on the iOS simulator and we'll compare the speeds of these two machines. So let's begin. Here I am on the MacBook Pro. I'm gonna use the CLI NS, used to be called TNS, but you can use TNS or NS now. They both work. NS create my app. I'm not gonna give it any more flags, just that. And the CLI is gonna ask me, do I wanna create an Angular app, a React app, a Vue app, a Svelte app, a TypeScript app, or a JavaScript app. We're gonna keep things really bare bones here. So I'm gonna create a frameworkless, TypeScriptless JavaScript app. I know some of you are gonna be happy about that, but you know, it's a basic test, so it's gonna be good. Maybe I'll even do an Angular test after this one completes. Let's do the same setup on the MacBook Air. NS create my app, and I'm gonna select JavaScript. So I'm gonna hit both of these enter keys at the same time. Ready? I forgot there's one more step in this wizard. We need to select a template. I'm gonna select hello world, that's fine with me, and I'm gonna hit enter at the same time. Okay, now it's gonna go ahead, grab the templates, create this new project, and you can see that the MacBook Air is already winning in that case. And this is a severely underpowered machine compared to the MacBook Pro, it's done. MacBook Pro is still working away, trying to create the application. Okay, now the MacBook Pro is done. So not a significantly huge boost, but enough if you're doing this quite a lot. I've noticed that when it comes to file IO and things like that, the MacBook Air so far has been really kicking some serious butt. When it comes to CPU intensive tasks, MacBook Pro still wins in the long run. So let's continue on, shall we? I need to go into my app directory and let's uh, clear this up a little bit to give us more space. Do the same thing here. And in order to actually trigger the app build and for it to start up the simulator automatically, we need to issue the command NS run and then the platform iOS. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, NS run iOS, and I'm gonna hit the enter key at the same time. Now this is important. And I know that right after this is gonna kick off the build. It's gonna build the JavaScript. It's gonna build the Xcode project and it's gonna start up the simulator, whatever the default simulator is set up to be. I think it's an iPad, but it doesn't matter. You can select whatever simulator you want to run this on, but I think by default it's gonna bring up the iPad Air. Also notice how quickly it's gonna bring up that simulator. I'm gonna do this, ready? One, two, three. Let's watch the clock and see what happens here. So right now nothing's happening. Oh, <laughs> looks like the iPad Air is already up and running on the MacBook Air and the simulator has already started. The build process is happening, template files are being built. Okay, the simulator started up here on the MacBook Pro now. We need a sports announcer to do this part. And there's the Xcode build. So let's see if it actually does the same thing for you that it did for me. Now they're both kind of uh, looking the same, aren't they? They're both on the same part doing the Xcode build. This one did finish faster, the MacBook Air, and it started up the application. There we go, MacBook Pro is still catching up. And finally, MacBook Pro finishes. Now the app did stop itself on the MacBook Pro for some reason, but you can always restart the app by tapping on the icon. And there we go. Okay, so there is an example of creating a brand new app. It hasn't been built before, so there's no generated app assets yet. You saw it before your eyes and the MacBook Air won that one with the M1 chip. Let's stop this process and run it again and see who wins on a already built project. I'm gonna terminate this one and terminate this one. 
and I'm gonna hit the up arrow to bring up the previous command and enter at the same time. Now let's watch this one and see who will win this one. Okay, so clearly the MacBook Air is already restarting the app and the app is running while this one is still doing the Webpack build. All right, so a big, big advantage for making changes and restarting the app. Now the app didn't stay open for some reason, but you can always trigger the app again by pressing on that icon. Without HMR working right now in native script, that's actually coming down the line. But for now, we're relying on the app restarting and that could be a long process. So right now, it, actually the M1 might be the best bet for doing native script development. Really, I was kind of blown away by this. Now I wanna do another test. We're creating an Angular app. So now we have a little bit more of a build process for the JavaScript side. So let's go ahead and back up one directory and I'm gonna say NS create brand new app and this is going to be my app ng dash dash ng if you pass the ng flag to the create command it'll automatically scaffold out an angular application so i'm going to pause right there not press enter let's do the same thing here ns create my app ng dash dash ng and i'm going to hit enter at the same time and let's see who creates the application first we already know what's going to happen don't we so if you've seen enough, you can switch off the video, but if you're curious to see the result of this test as well, then keep watching. All right, so it looks like the MacBook Air already finished and we're still waiting on the MacBook Pro, just as I suspected. After all, this is all just file IO right here pretty much. So we know the M1 chip is much faster at file IO at this point. So my app ng, let's go into that directory. Same thing here, my app ng and ns run iOS, NS run iOS. Ready for this? Three, two, one, enter. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on. See who's gonna win. All right, come on now, come on. Copying template files. MacBook Air is already done with that. MacBook Air is already doing the compilation, which is the longest part when it comes to the Angular builds. MacBook Pro is catching up. I don't know, this might surprise me. No. No, MacBook Air is making a run for it. It's doing the Xcode build now while the Pro is still finishing up the compilation. Installing pods. Now the MacBook Pro is doing the Xcode build. MacBook Air is probably almost done with that. Yep, Air is restarting the simulator with the app running and there's our application running in the simulator on the MacBook Air. Here we're still doing the Xcode build. All right, restarting the application, and there we go. The MacBook Pro is done, and there is our app on the MacBook Pro. I can even feel a little bit of sluggishness in the simulator on the MacBook Pro, but the MacBook Air is super smooth and super silky on that list. Let's take a look at the navigation. Yeah, that's pretty smooth. How about this one? Yeah, the navigation is a little bit choppy here as well. Now, if we take a look at the process here on the memory side, on the MacBook Pro, you'll see that Node is actually taking up 1.22 gigabytes. Here, Node is taking up one gigabytes and then another Node process right below it. So uh, this one also has two Node processes, by the way. It looks like this one is taking up a little less now. And MacBook Air is still taking up about a gigabyte. Let's take a look at the CPU. On the CPU side, you will see that we've got a screen capture app actually taking up a lot of the real estate on the CPU side because I'm capturing the screen, the video. So that could be interfering with some of the tests as well. I don't see anything that really jumps out at me here. So whatever it is that's causing this simulator to be sluggish, I don't quite know what that is. Anyway, there you have it. As far as build times go, which is what this video is about, the MacBook Air with the M1 processor clearly beating out the Intel MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM and an i9 processor. If you like this kind of video, just click that button right below and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos I got coming up on development workflow and the new M1 processor, the Apple M1 compared to the MacBook Pro from last year. And if you found this video useful or entertaining, give me a thumbs up, please appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.